Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you a very traditional South Indian breakfast dish known as the chow chow bath. Chow chow bath is essentially two dishes, that's rava upma and kesari that's had along together for breakfast. So without wasting any time, let's dive right in to see how to make these two dishes in a quick and simple way. So to begin making the rava upma, uh, first what I'm going to do is to boil the water, salt and sugar and keep the water, boiling water ready. And then we will roast the rava along with the spices and mix them together. So let's begin into a saucepan, add in the water, salt and just a dash of sugar. Give this a stir so that the sugar and the salt dissolve in the water and allow it to come to a boil. Uh, once it comes to a boil, we'll keep this separate under simmer and proceed to make the rava upma. I'm going to shift this boiling water and keep it in simmer on the other side. Let's do that first. I want the water to be warm, so hence kept it in simmer. Now to begin making the rava upma, I'm going to add in some oil. Once the oil heats up, I'm going to add in the mustard seeds and the half urad dal. Allow the mustard seeds and the half urad dal to crackle and the urad dal will also roast itself to a light brown. Now that the urad dal is lightly roasted, I'm going to add in the onions, finely chopped. You can also add sambar onions that is finely chopped. It gives a good flavor to the rava upma. I'm going to grate in an inch piece of ginger. Add in a slit green chili and lots of curry leaves. Give the mixture a stir and saute until the onions have become lightly tender. You don't want them to become too soft because it's going to get cooked along with the rava upma as well. We will now add in the suji, fine semolina also known as rava and roast it on low to medium heat until the rava turns lightly brown. You don't want it to become too dark brown, just lightly brown. You can know that it's well roasted when you actually smell the roasted rava, you get a roasted smell and it doesn't smell raw. And uh, you will notice the bottom starting to brown a little bit as well. So as soon as you notice that, we have to add in the uh, water that we have been simmering for a bit. And make sure you add it carefully because and turn the heat to low because it'll splutter all over uh, when it is very hot. Okay. Keep stirring the upma continuously until you the upma thickens and it gets cooked really well. Notice that in just a few seconds the upma has begun to thicken. As soon as it begins to thicken and thickens a little more, I'm going to turn the heat to low and cover the pan. Allow the upma to cook in the steam. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. We'll cover the upma, turn the heat to low, make sure the heat isn't low and allow it to steam for about three to four minutes. And once it's steamed, we will proceed to the next steps. So after about three to four minutes, notice that the upma has thickened a little bit, but it looks a little dry. I do think it needs a little bit of ghee or more oil. So at this stage, I'm going to add in ghee because it adds great flavors to the upma. Stir the ghee in. We'll add in the steamed vegetables. I had already cooked some carrots earlier. So I'm going to add in the carrots. 
You can also add beans or cauliflower. Um, I like to steam it previously and keep it because the, you know the nutrition remains in the vegetable and it doesn't get overcooked. And the last and the most important ingredient is the a juice from the lemon. We'll squeeze it in. Stir to combine all the ingredients well and the upma is now ready to be served along with kesari bath. I hope you enjoyed watching the video recipe of how to make rava upma and the kesari bath together known as the chow chow bath. Do give this recipe and when you do, don't forget to share your feedback in the comments below. Until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.